So welcome here to the MIAA, Massachusetts Interscholistic Athletic Association State Championship Finals here in Curry College, Milton, Massachusetts. Teams are just lining up and being introduced. Thanks to our friends at Belmont Media Center and Jeremy LeServe here, who's, who's doing a sterling job in this misty, rainy weather here, keeping the camera dry and, and the picture clear. And I'm joined here with Peter Rosenmeyer, who is, uh, who, who commentated on our first match this morning. And Peter, maybe for those who didn't catch to see it, you can give us a quick summary. How did the boys do? Yeah, the boys did great, walking away with the second straight uh, state championship this morning. Very, very hard-fought team. Uh, very, very hard-fought game against the talented St. John's Prep Eagles team. And uh, Belmont uh, was able to play some really staunch defense um, and then make the most of their opportunities. So uh, Belmont walked away. I I don't have this final score right. It was 24-14. Like yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, so by 10 points. Uh, and uh, But both teams fighting very hard until the very end of, the, of that match. So really exciting, and hope, hopefully this one's as, uh, as engaging. Well, I'm sure it will be two great teams here. Belmont have brought an unbeaten record into the final um, throughout the season, and, and Brookline were the surprise winners, I think, over Lincoln Sudbury in uh, the semifinal. So their first uh, final here, they'll be... All out, all um, I'm sure full on to try and make an impression at the early start, so Belmont will need to withstand their pressure, but it should be another great game. Well, of course, my, uh, my uh, allegiances are with Belmont High School, but I'm uh, a little bit split today as I'm an uh, alumni of, of Brookline High and started right. playing rugby there in all right. 1983 uh, under coach Ian Ryrie, who had a huge influence on high school rugby uh, in Massachusetts. So, That's great. That's so, great. Nice little bit of history there. Yep. So you're like torn here, but not, obviously... Not very, uh, actually. Okay. <laughs> Belmont team just being introduced here. And we were reminded today that it was one year ago today um, that both the boys and girls won the state championships in 2022. So defending champions, the boys came through today and now we have the double, perhaps the double today if the girls can, uh, can also come through and, and win today. An exciting day and of course Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there and we're glad you're joining us today for this exciting MIAA uh, championship game. What a better way to spend Father's Day than to watch your family, friends uh, out here competing at uh, Curry College in Milton, Massachusetts. Yes, very good. And just a special shout out to our friend David Hamer, who's traveling in Europe. He's usually in this commentary box doing a sterling job all year. So David, Hope you're traveling safe and able to watch the game. And, and hello to all the families all over the world. I know m several team members have folks all over the country and all over the world tuning in on, on the live stream today. So let's hope it's an exciting game. And um, we will uh, wait for the anthem to play and then kick off. Our great nation has persevered through the leadership and sacrifices of men and women who have served or are currently serving in our armed forces. We invite both veterans and current military personnel to stand. We thank you for your service to our country. Now, we invite all to stand for our national anthem.
All right, so there we go. The national anthems are over. The teams are getting set. One last huddle. Strategies are set, and we are about to kick off in just a couple of minutes. Um, kind of drizzly wet day, as we mentioned here. This, this game was pushed out from yesterday, originally scheduled yesterday, but canceled due to heavier rain. And um, the, the little misty rain could make for slippery conditions, so it'll be a big test for the backs to be able to handle the ball and passing out. And uh, Belmont have very speedy wings, so this may be a factor in today's game for them, Peter. What do you think? Absolutely. I haven't seen the Brookline team play before, but, uh, you know, Belmont's typical style of rugby is pretty open, pretty quick, trying to get the ball wide. And, of course, the wet conditions are unfortunately conducive to uh, slippage and knock-ons and all kinds of mishandles. So we'll see how we do here. But uh, Belmont is historically good at making those uh, in-the-minute in adjustments, so I'm sure that they've already been talking about how to adjust for uh, this uh, misty weather we're having. Belmont, uh, Belmont playing right to left in dark blue and Brookline left to right kicking off here. Right, Coach McCabe has really got this team well drilled so they can adjust as, as needed. And here is uh, Robin Tanamura who takes the ball in. First rock out, Shelby Hall. Oh, there's the bobble. Oh, well held though. Nice job handling that again. Putting a point on our on it. So Lucy Cabral with a kick through. Looking for Mia Taylor. This fullback is on. Oh, just skipped through there. Belmont covering that kick really well, but Brookline does. So good tackle, good drive back there by Robin Tonamura. Excellent work. Playing in the center today. There's Lulu Conroy trying to steal that. And that's a penalty for holding on. That's great job at the rook there by the Belmont team. Uh, first penalty to Belmont. So, so referee signals that the Brookline person held onto the ball on the ground, which is a penalty. For, for those who are new to the game, we'll, we'll explain a couple of the rules as we go through it. But um, that's the first penalty to Belmont. And, and Lucy Cabral kicks it in. So nice play there by Belmont, holding that ball in to the tackled player, uh, of effectively not allowing them to release the ball, which was the call. Uh, so Belmont forcing the turnover there. And again, uh, with the kick into touch, uh, Belmont has the throw in. Oh, and just bobbled by Sage Tonamura there, but worked out. They're out to Mia Taylor, who's got good speed. If she can break away, she's broken through a tackle. She's racing down the right side of the wing. She cuts inside, is just tripped up. Team is there, recycled balls, recycled. Out to Lucy Cabral. Into Rowan. Oh, and she, Rowan breaks through, and then she's through for the first score. Rowan Dargan, what a, what a start. What Amazing. a start by Belmont. Look at that. Great phases, great pressure on the ball all the way down the field. And then uh, darting through right at the uh, at the two minute mark here, Charlie. That's just a great start. This will really settle those nerves coming in. Uh, a great bit of support work on the rock on the side. A great break by by Mia Taylor, but great support from the team. Popped the ball into Roan Dargan, who broke through a couple of tackles and scored the first try. All right, we'll just quickly go through the teams here for folks while we have a, a, a bit of a breather. And, and starting, uh, I'll introduce Belmont, and then and maybe, Peter, you could do the Brookline team. But starting uh, in the front row, we have uh, Campbell van der Heiden. She's starting loose head number one. Kelsey Donaldson is hooking at number two. And Lulu Conroy is starting in tight head number three. Sally Amer is uh, second row at number four, partnering with Rowan Dargan, our try scorer at number five with Sadie Taylor playing on the blind side flank at number six. Alex Townsend open side flank at number seven. And Sage Tonamura McDonald is starting at the base of the scrum at eight. We have Shelby Ball playing scrum half at nine with Lucy Cabrell at 10. Our centers are Liv Mann at 12. Robin Tonamura McDonald, a sister of Sage at 13. And our two wingers, Mira Gardner on the left at number 11 and Ella Oram on the right at number uh, 14, and then backed up with Mia Taylor at number 15, fullback. So the conversion was good, and five points for the try, two points for the conversion, making it seven nothing Belmont.
And again in rugby, the team that has scored upon kicks to the team that has scored. So Belmont receives that kick. Oh, and, and that is Sadie Taylor was tripped uh, going into the uh, breakthrough. Is she slow to get up? She looks okay. Maybe just a little bit. So there's a penalty to, uh, stopping the clock here, penalty to Belmont from, from what looked like a foot trip. Um, and she seemed to land heavily on the turf. Let's hope she's okay. I wonder if she got the breath knocked out of her uh, landing on the turf, uh, maybe on top of the ball there. Coach doesn't look too worried. Nope. She's nodding her head. Maybe the magic sponge can come out and all will be cured, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the magic oh. sponge. I think you could be right. Coach McCabe is there. She's, uh, she's asking, does she want to come off? So while we have a break in the action here, let's introduce the players from Brookline High School. Uh, in the forwards for Brookline High, Lila Hoffman at number one, Sarah Montner, uh, playing hooker. Uh, tight head prop is Anouk Pierce. Adazi Anyosh is uh, at number four. Penelope Waldron at number five. Uh, the flankers are Meredith Christ and Kale Bundy, and at number eight, Samantha Dickerman. Scrum half, Catherine Perlis. Fly half, Zoe Raybold. Camille Fisher is at one wing. Sophia Hauser is the inside center. Ivy Wheeler at the outside center. Myra Dew at uh, the other wing, and Angela Hughes is the fullback. So Sadie Taylor got up. She's back in the game, so that's good. And now Belmont took the uh, resulting penalty. We broke it out, but now a penalty against Belmont for holding on to the ball. Once that signal from the ref means they're holding on when they're on the ground, and you must let that go once you've hit the ground. So penalty to Brookline, and now the sun has started shining. So it's going to be one of those days, I think, where the, the, the sun and the rain duke it out for uh, supremacy here <laughs> in, in the weather. So we'll see, we'll see how, this, uh, how this pans out. Yep, the rain certainly won the first half. We'll see how the <laughs> sun does here in the second half. Oh, that penalty kick stays in, so Belmont has an opportunity to play it here and does. The tackle, though, and Belmont are looking, running out. Brooking, shall be out to Lucy. There's Sadie again, driving forward. She's back on her feet. Shelby out to Lucy, who kicks it through. Nice kick into space there. Is that, oh, ball's tossed back in dangerously. It's bounced forward, I think. Yeah, referee signaling a knock on. And it's a Belmont scrum. So Brookline knocked it forward there as they tried to keep the ball alive. Good pressure there by um, by Mira Gardner up there, right up under that kick to uh, force the error. So now, is this our first scrum of the day? I believe it is. I believe it is, yeah. So our referee, Don Jenning, head referee today, uh, consulting with Wayne uh, Grestenfelden, who's uh, the touch judge here. Solid scrum by Belmont. Good control by Sage at the back of the scrum there. Oh. Okay. Ball had gone backwards, though, so Belmont retains. And there's Mia Taylor trying to force her way through in the center. Rooks are there. Shelby out to Rowan Dargan now with those distinctive pink boots. She's plowing forward. Good support by the Marauders here, right on the ball, every carry. Okay, that's good, that's good. There's their mauling the ball forward. Lulu Conroy there pops it back. You have a little space on the outside. There's Alex Townsend is getting it out to Mira Gardner, and she can run. Go, Mira. She's running down. It breaks inside, breaks two tackles. One to beat. She keeps going strong. Oh, great tackle by number 12 there from Brookline covering back. Super tackle. Wonderful tackle, and, and everybody here's seems Sally okay. Sally Amer bursting through. Belmont really putting pressure on the line now. They're 20 yards out. Momentum for Belmont here, and they have numbers on the outside if they can get it there. Oh. Mia held up on the tackle. Ball comes back. It's the recycling is super fast here. Such an advantage when you can get the ball to ground and back out again very quickly. It really keeps the defense moving backwards and disorganized. 
And here's Sally now bursting through this the other second row. Ruck just formed. And I think a penalty. not rolling away. Yep, not rolling away. So once you've made the tackle in Belmont, you have to roll away from the play, clear the space around the ruck. Right, because otherwise it just becomes obstruction, right? I think at the yes. end of the day, you can obstruct the, cynically obstruct the play, so referees will call a penalty on that, and the uh, referee was right on top of that there, so. A good penalty kick there by Lucy Hamer. Has Belmont on the 10-yard line here of Brookline. Throw in a Belmont. Might see Belmont try to maul this in. Wouldn't be surprised. Oh. Oh. It just about, oh, and I think Brookline have stolen Brookline that. have stolen that line out. Nice play at the front of the line there by Brookline. Probably going to take a couple of phases and get some space for their kicker. Yeah, they, they do. Okay, we move back up to like the 20-yard line here, 18-yard line, so that's good. So the throw into Belmont. They need to get their calls right. We were saying this in our last game, how these, uh, even these set plays like the line out are very strategic in a way. There's specific calls, the, the, the thrower, um, who's the, first, the player throwing the ball in knows exactly where they want to throw. A great catch there by Sage. Nice timing on that. Line out. Live. Well, good looping pass oh, there. another nice. one on the outside. And there's uh, Ella Oram. She's good. She's got broken down in the tackle. Ball comes back. And now the forwards are going to take this on. Oh, but, but Brookline have stolen it. Okay, and what's in the penalty to Belmont? I didn't see the call. I think coming in through the side of the ruck. I see that, yeah. So once the ruck is formed, um, the, the width of the ruck is the width of the player on the ground. Uh, um, uh, so you try to make yourself as long and lean as possible on the ground uh, because the rucking players have to come in through that width, through the, what they call the gate. And uh, the Brookline player came in through the side, resulting in the penalty. Thank you for that. I haven't, hadn't heard those terms before, and the gate and the, the width of the player. So after playing the game for many, many years and watching it for even more, I, uh, I learned something new. So thank you for that little lesson, Peter. We're always learning. That's Charlie. it. That's the, the beauty learning. of That's this the game. Beauty. Yeah. So Belmont took that line out <laughs> from the resulting penalty. Now have a maul, which is a standing, a standing um, uh, uh, how do you describe it? It's like a standing um, play. Standing ruck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's moving. It's a moving play. It's a moving ruck where players are all on their feet and it's uh, illegal to, ca to tackle someone to bring that down. So either the mall collapses through momentum or our team's able to recycle it out. So very so advantageous that, play. That mall being taken into touch by Brookline and the, with the Belmont player still hanging on to the ball, which resulted in the turnover and it's Brookline throw in. So oh, many good rules disruption. to learn. Good disruption there, but they've recovered well, and that's a great number three there for Brookline. Great recovery driving forward. Ruck is formed. Oh, and Alex Townsend was trying to break through there, but knocked the ball on, and it is a scrum to Brookline. Yeah, the number three for Brookline, Anouk Pierce, uh, really with a heads-up play there. Okay, so we're about 12 minutes in here in the first half, here from Curry College in Milton, Massachusetts. It's 7-0 to Belmont. And, and we've had a lot of play in the Brookline half. Belmont have been, um, you know, majority of the play has been in this half. So strong start for the Marauders. Oh, good defense. A great tackle there in the middle by Lucy Cabral. Oh, and that'll be a knock forward. That's okay. Scrum to Belmont. Play breaks down. That's that slippy ball we were talking about again, yeah. the greasy ball from the rain. Unfortunately, um, Brookline just tipped that forward. So Belmont with wonderful attacking position here. Situation where they can uh, run either side of the scrum. A lot of space on that right side. Wouldn't be surprised to see the number eight take that ball right even though most of the backs are lined up here to the left. Oh, but they've lost it. Oh, oh ball comes out for Brookline. Out. Okay, ref's calling it back. 
So it might have come directly out the okay. channel there. I think that's what happened. I wonder these, uh, there used to be, like, the scrum used to be very competitive where the two hooking, the two middle players would each compete for the hook. It seems it's more passive these days, but um, I don't know if you've noticed that in the boys' game as well. Is it pre pretty passive in there? Uh, absolutely. A lot less contention of the, uh, and indeed and the eight man does pick. Sage picked and went right, spun right, breaking down balls there. More people on the narrow side now. Lucy out numbers, to numbers. Liv, and Liv is breaking through. She's stopped at about five yard line. Crowd really into it here. Crowd really College. into it here. Oh, great bit of defense there by, by Brookline's back row. But we've recycled again, and Sally to Lulu Conroy, who is forming the ruck. Hard yards, and another penalty to Belmont. This is really, again, trying to use your hands on the ground, and Lulu Conroy was bursting through. Oh. She's called back, unfortunately. Don Jennings said she didn't play it through the mark. Charlie, oh. unfortunately. There we now go again. She now she'll go. There's <laughs> Lulu going to try and power her way through, and she's inches short. Such a powerful runner, Lulu. It ball spun out to the box. There's Mia Taylor driving those feet. Look at that. That's great bit of work there with four players around her. She's just inches short. And here's Sally Amer over for the try. That hey. is fantastic. Great try by Belmont. That was just super play, like rooking it out quickly again, as we said, that, that speed of ball out of the rook, the support play, like Mia Taylor carrying four players with her to the line, like the, the brook line were totally sucked into that. And then Sally Amer with the finishing touch, that's, that's super play by Belmont. Absolutely, and it's that individual effort to carry that ball forward, and then the support where you have two or three players right on your heels, ready to ruck, and that creates that quick ball that keeps the, the uh, defense on its heels and, and ends up in tries like that. Beautiful work. So our two second rows, the power engine of the scrum are our try scores. You don't see that in many games, do you, when, this, when it's the second rows taking all the glory? <laughs> One of the nice things, uh, you know, is that there's, uh, there's really a place for everybody in rugby and even uh, uh, body types who might not get to run the ball in other sports, they might be not be the fastest on the field, will find a way to carry the ball to score points uh, in rugby. Yeah, it's a super game and, and um, Lucy Cabral had a great kick there to slot over the conversion. That's another two points. So now two tries, 14 points. We have about 20 minutes, 19 minutes left in the first half. So. Belmont kind of establishing themselves here. This is a great performance by the Marauders. But they'll keep a cool head. They'll go back to 0-0, as you always say, Peter, and uh, they will, uh, they'll they just play the game like it's 0-0. And that was the chant from the crowd. Might have been the boys' team who, uh, who as we said, just walked off the field, the uh, state champions, urging the girls to remember it's 0-0. Oh, that's a great kick into the into the deep end of the Belmont half. They're knocked it back. Goes backwards though. By that's Ella Oram, I think, who is starting today because Ali Caputo unfortunately broke her wrist in the semi-final against Wayne. It's very Ali had played all season, was a super super winger on the team, and had that unfortunate injury. Um, so Ella Oram stepped in, and she's a, a a super player as well. So yeah, done so very ably here so far today. What a hard, what a hard-hitting uh, game that was against Weymouth. That Weymouth team really came in uh, uh, determined and um, and uh, with a good game plan. They really did, and it was. I think it shocked the girls a little bit because it was uh, something they they and they were, it was good for them. They were able to show their resilience, their grit, and really grind it out. And I think it was. Uh, a good kind of lesson for them as to that a hard team and, and the work you need to do to keep focus on your game, play your game, and keep on uh, have belief in your strategy. And, and they were able to grind out the win. Oh, the ball pops out there, and Alex Townsend is quickly on it, but the referee's calling it back. Once again, that came right out the channel there. The scrum half uh, feeds the ball into the to the pack, into the hooker, who's the number two up in the front row, whose job it is to kick that ball backwards. And if it comes directly out the same channel, you uh, reset the scrum. So we're looking at this. It is a Brookline scrum on the Belmont 25. 
And Brookline feeding it out their back line. This is the first real kind of sustained uh, bit of attack Brookline have had so far. That's good, good turn on the ball, good rocking back. Oh, and back. they have some numbers this side. Oh. oh, it's good tackle down by Robin. Brookline support there. And again, numbers wide, if they can get the ball out. Oh, Alex Townsend there with the tackle. Beautiful line speed by Alex. And Brookline now just trying to form, get their formations, get their pods sorted. Rooking the ball here well. Good, this is a good set of phases for Brookline. Oh, the ball just bobbles forward. I think, I think Robin was up super fast Super there. fast. Like she totally took that Blair, distracted the, her opposite number and uh, really caused that bobble to happen, right, by her speed. One of the absolute uh, mantras for Belmont Rugby, both on the girls' side and the boys' side, is that defense wins games, and you have to have that quick line speed. Get up into the backfield uh, while your opponents are trying to play uh, rugby and disrupt them, disrupt them, disrupt them. Well, scrum's down. Oh, Frex was play stopped there. I think the scrum, everybody up from the scrum, that's good. I think we're going to reset that again. Let's take a breather. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, the refs, refs, especially in high school, but really all over rugby, uh, want to see good, tight, well-controlled scrummaging because there's so much torque in there with 16 athletes, who, uh, all of whom are incredibly fit at this point in the season, all trying to engage with one another and push one another off the ball. Just uh, uh, really important to take it, take it safely and slowly. So here's Robin Tonamure. Oh, look at that McDonald bursting through. 20 yards she gains on just the pure speed work through there. Lucy Cabral puts it up over the top. Oh, and uh, Mia Taylor gets the tackle in. And now Alex Townsend with a super tackle. Belmont are there, but Brookline quick to the rook. That's well done. Good support by Brookline, but wonderful, again, wonderful pressure defensively by, uh, by the Marauders. Okay, clearance kick there from Brookline. And it's not quite in. Oh, the ball bounces and Brookline have recovered. On the far side here, they've formed the ruck. Belmont not getting drawn in. Just sticking on their line. There's good depth here. Brookline are trying to, oh, cutting inside there. Rook formed here again. Oh, great tackling there. Oh, wonderful tackle, driven back. That was um, Campbell van der Heiden there, did some super tackling in that rock there. And now we have another knock forward by Brookline. Oh, just as they were gathering a little bit of momentum there. So we have a player on her knee, number 15. Okay, so ref is just coming over to see here. Um, I didn't quite see what happened, but I think that that was um, in that ruck. Campbell van der Heiden did a great tackle there to drive that back, and I think this is just a little twist or tweak getting checked out. So that's the Brookline number 15, Angela Hughes. Looks like she's just gonna get a little tape on that ankle and rejoin the action here. Despite the, the misty rain and the sun, it's, the temperatures are quite nice, right? It's like Very you know, high 60s, maybe yeah. sort of 18, 19 degrees Celsius for those friends outside of the US and uh, high 60s here in Fahrenheit. Um, and sometimes this game can be played in baking hot temperatures. So I'm sure the players are, are glad for uh, the cooler temps. It, it, it makes it a lot easier for them. So anyway, it looks like we're back in business and it is a scrum to Belmont. It's always warm on a rugby pitch. <laughs> it certainly is. Shelby's going to put this in. Shelby ball. Ball comes back. Sage Good at the scrum. base of the scrum. 
That's good. Out to Lucy Cabral. There's a skip move back here. Beautiful, beautiful passing and out by to Belmont. Mia Taylor now, who then beautiful loops around loops. to Lucy. He Lucy Cabral, the out half, who had looped all the way around. Breaks through two tackles, brings two or three players with her. The ruck is formed. Shelby's there. And Sadie. That's super work there by Sadie Taylor to bring it forward again. Belmont still have the ball. That's the hooker, Kelsey Donaldson, driving forward now. Shelby out to Lucy again. Out to Liv. Liv out to Sage. That's Sage. Oh, is Sage needs some through. space. She was trying to dart through. Refs in the. Oh, there we go. And now it's back to Roan, who's trying to do it again. Look at her bringing four players with her. Super driving. Belmont on the five yard line. And there's Lulu Conroy driving forward. And here's Robin. Oh, it looks like she does. Dummy pass, but gets caught up. Good tackling. Good defense by Brookline here. They're well organized. And that is, is that Alex Townsend trying to get through? We formed up. Kelsey Donaldson here, I think, in this. With the driving still on her feet. They're inches short. Belmont from a third try. Now it's going out the backs. Liv Mann is trying to burst through, and she rolls over. And she's given and she's the try. <laughs> oh. I think that she I think she slipped in the tackle, but the momentum of rolling, she was smart play, like just keep going, rolled over and got the touchdown. Absolutely, and that's a real team try. Lulu's carry, then Kelsey's carry. I mean, pulling that defense in and then eventually you're gonna create a seam where somebody's gonna sneak through if you just retain ball and recycle the way that they did. That's Beautiful. That, absolutely, and it all started with the box play. Lucy Cabral doing a super looping run, creating the extra player out. They had the overlap, she breaks down 20 yards. You can't stop a moving train when it's going at that speed, right? And then they just recycled it out, as you said, and then the forwards did the rest and uh, super try for live at the end. We've got a very active crowd here below us. They're really into this. The boys are, uh, the boys team are here en masse after their victory, really yelling their support um, for the team. And I think this is the culture at the Belmont High School, that the boys and girls are there for each other every game. They support each other and they play for each other. And I think it's super, it's a super culture. Absolutely. And uh, wonderful, you know, 80 boys and 70 girls playing, uh, playing rugby in Belmont. Uh, wonderful, cohesive team culture, supportive. Um, <laughs> With uh, you know, with lots and lots of siblings uh, and um, and uh, tremendous parent support uh, on all sides. So, not a bad way to spend Father's Day. Uh, <laughs> saying your own kid's name right. on the mic, Charlie. That, huh? Well, same for you with Asa. Congratulations, your son, um, uh, who was on the boys' team earlier and played a great game. He was uh, he was in the thick of everything. That's all I could see. And uh, you know, he uh, congratulations to you and. And the family. This is a this is a crowning moment for you, right? This is a, this is your third boy through the high school. S second, second boy second through boy, the high school. Second uh, boy. Ace's brother Eric was captain of the team uh, last year. Played number ten uh, and uh, scored ten points in the in the final last year uh, on this very day at Curry, Curry College. Oh, a little oh. knock forward there by Belmont. That's that slippy ball. So. That'll be a knock on, but advantage is played now. So the referee can choose to play advantage. If the team who is going to get the result of the, of the infringement can be moving forward, the referee will let the play on for, for an undetermined amount of time, but they'll make a decision on whether the, the team has the advantage or not. But in this case, it wasn't. Belmont were tackled behind the, the line of the infringement. So we'll go back to the scrum, uh, the knock on, I should say, by Belmont. And it is a scrum to Brookline. So Lucy Cabral got that conversion there of that try. So it is 21 points to zero to Belmont. We have about eight minutes left in the first half, 35 minutes a half uh, at this level. And so far, so good for the Belmont Marauders. Absolutely. Uh, Belmont definitely on the front foot most of the first half here. But Brookline has an opportunity playing in here at about the 34 and uh, uh, with ball in hand. So let's see what they can do with it. Ball skirts out there again. The ref called that back. Oh, 
Here we go, so the ball's going to get put in. Brookline ball, a good drive forward by Belmont, but Brookline get it out. Oh, that's a high pass, that's a great tackle by Robin. She's trying to steal the ball, keep the player up. Ruck is formed. Brookline driving forward, this is their second phase here. Oh, a heads up play, backs are up. And again, stifling defense by the Marauders just up into the back line with uh, real tenacity and making that tackle, solid tackle. Look at that tackle, yeah. like that is super play as they roll away from the ball. That was Sage, Tonamira McDonald with that tackle. Ball spun out here on the side. There's Alex Townsend who's not gonna let anybody get by her. So she's very strong in the tackle too, but, but Belmont looked like they had strayed offside, so. Penalty in the middle of the field to Brookline. So it looks like we're gonna see uh, tap and go here. Brookline trying to. Run the ball ahead. Oh no, she's gonna kick for touch. It's a hard touch finder from that spot in the middle of the field and she can't find it, so Belmont with the... There's Mia Taylor now with the return with the, and she's straightening up, straightens up and she's bursting through the tackles and Mia gets right back to the 50 yard line, right in the middle of the field. Great play, the ball comes back, options each side. There's Sally Hamer with the ball. She's breaking through, Sally, Sally is so just strong. gone. Sally, she's powering through, loose. Lulu Conroy forms the ruck, there we go. There's Shelby out to Lucy Cabral, out to Rowan Dargan who's bursting through again. These phases, these pods are super. There's Liv Mann who passes it out to Mia Taylor inside to Ella Orham. Nice cutback. Well done. And there's Campbell van der Heiden who's trying to form the new phase of play. Brooke forms. Lucy Cabral. Oh, inside to Mia Taylor on the bursting, the burst through, but there was a little bit of crossing. Obstru yeah. Uh, yeah. Obstru Obstruction crossing, right. I think we ran into our own player there on that move. Yep. Um, could even have been her sister she ran into, so I'm sure they'll have words at the dinner table tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, yeah. I forgive you. Nice try. <laughs> so, so Mia Taylor, number 15, uh, sister, uh, is a sister of Sadie Taylor, number six there. So uh, I think there was a little bit of a traffic jam in the Taylor house there. So And un uh, unlike American uh, football, uh, where you want your players in front right. of you, in, uh, in rugby, you're not allowed to have any kind of blocking, blocking play. So I think that was the... That was the call there. So Brookline put in from that penalty, and um, or that infringement, I should say. So the ball comes out. Brookline out to their, all the way out to the wing, number 22, but great tackle there by Mi Mira. She's crawling out, and that's okay. Yep. Not able to get out, so uh, penalty here. That was Mira Gardner with the tackle. Mira Gardner really trying to get away from that ruck and just got hung up there, so that was the call. And Brookline finds touch at around the 45 and will be playing in. So we're right here in front of us now. This is a throw into Brookline. Number eight for uh, Brookline, Samantha Dickerman doing the throwing. Uh, And a lot of different options uh, here in the line out. Looks like Belmont's not covering the back part of that line. Might be smart for Brookline to go long. They do. Oh, and Lulu Conroy grabs it at the back, but it just knocked tipped forward, unfortunately. So that went over the throw and um, over the back there. And we're going to have a scrum now to Belmont, or to Brookline, excuse me. So game settling into a more normal pace now a little bit, you know, after the frantic first 10 minutes. So I think we're, uh, everyone trying to establish their game plan again. So Belmont with the dominant scrums here, but Brookline able to hook the ball very well, despite the Belmont push. That's great, great scrummaging from Belmont. You're right there, they really had that scrum, but it's going out the back line here. A great tackle there by by um, Ella Orham, super tough. No, that was Mira Gardner, I should say, at number 11. Oh. And Ala
Alex Townsend what drives in and she's up trying to get over the ball, but what well rocked. Well, great tackle there, but the Brookline still have the ball. Reforming in the middle of the field. Great drive back from Campbell. And it's out, it's out. The live, live man has the tackle there. The ball is down. So Brookline recycling and getting several phases here, but nonetheless moving backwards on the field due to the pressure that Belmont's able to put on them defensively. They do have an overload here, but they can't get that ball wide. The tackling is just superb, and, but we're now breaking through. Oh, another super tackle by Rowan Dargan there. Wow, diving at the feet. Ball's out, Brookline still have the ball, but they're they're not moving forward here. They're not breaking the game line. There we go, now they're forward there. Ball skips through, it did go backwards. Mira takes a great tackle down. Alex is trying to pull the ball back. She has it, Alex Townsend breaks Alex. out of it. She's gonna go. She's gonna keep running. Sally is there to form the rock. Ball comes back. Great play by Alex Townsend. And now and Sage is, Sadie Taylor is breaking through. And look how quickly Belmont re resettles, reforms their offensive and there's structure. Kelsey Donaldson trying to break through. It is super play. They know exactly where they want to go. And that's a penalty, though. Holding on. Okay, holding into it as we went down. So... Gosh, that was great bit of rooking by uh, Alex Townsend. They're counter rooking, steals the ball, and then breaks away. Referee is calling for the coaches. Everyone's down. So, so Alex, after that play, is just needing a little bit of attention here on the left side of the field. We had Rodan Dargan on the right side of the field, who looks to be back up on her feet after getting some uh, quick physio attention there. So I think she's good. And the Brookline team respectfully just taking a knee here as the Belmont players are uh, needing a little bit of attention. Alex playing so hard, throwing everything she has into every single point of contact uh, for sure. Really a tough, tough player. We hope she'll be able to get back to her feet and get in this game. I think like before she's winded, I think you said, like you said it before, I think um, when we had this earlier, She's up I think on her it's her feet. left, her oh, no, left her ankle, ankle actually. Is, uh, her ankle is. No, this is more, yeah. Yep. All right. So Alex will be probably going off now at the, you know, where are we in the last minute of the first half? Um, so referee will play a few extra minutes for these stoppages, but we have, uh, Alex will be maybe getting treated at half time, and let's see if she comes back out for the second half or not, but. So they may bring Abby Hill in. That may be what they do and switch Sage to flanker and Abby to eight. But we'll see what the uh, we'll see what the coaches decide here. Now it looks to be. Number 16. Melis Demetrius, that's yeah. great. So she's in. She will play, Melis will play flanker. And Brookline had the free kick, had the penalty, so they took their kick, it's into touch, and it is their throw in. One of the nice things about um, having so many kids uh, playing the sport in Belmont is that you just end up with a huge depth of uh, of teams, uh, players that can come in pretty seamlessly and, and take over for others. It Court. is great. Yes, the de that depth of squad is really a feature of uh, of Coach Bruce and Coach McCabe's uh, style, right? They're, they're, they don't play 15-person rugby. They play, you know, 30, 40-player 40 40 rugby, rugby, you know? Yeah. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. And and the and the kids all know that your your spot is not guaranteed week to week. You really have to go out and compete against each other, uh, in order to to earn the right to wear the jersey. So Brookline now trying to recycle the phase here. We are in official stoppage time, so the referee is now control of how much time that they will add on to this half. We've played the full 35 minutes, um, and Brookline are. 
trying to finish strong in this first half. So let's see what Belmont can do. The number 15 for Brookline, Angela Hughes, spinning away from several Marauders uh, tacklers and running strongly there. So in the middle of the Brookline trying to recycle the phase, but Belmont are just driving them back consistently here. Again, quick up in the line. She's kicking it in. Oh, uh, awkward bounce there, and it didn't quite... Uh, the referee's going to call a knock-on. I was wondering, would he, because it did hit legs. I don't know what happened here. No, it called a penalty. Oh, it's off. must have been offside, maybe. I think so. I think it hit, it hit the... Belmont player's foot and then another uh, Belmont player who was in front of her and uh, and that is an offside infraction. All right, so penalty kick here to Brookline. They kick it up. We're on about the 30 yard line, 30 yards out from the uh, the Belmont try line. So Brookline on the offensive here to end the first half or the last few moments of the first half. I think the referee will probably blow up once the next breakdown in play happens, but we never finish a uh, a game on a, on a penalty, so the penalty has to be played out, and Brookline now have the throw in. So Brookline with one last gasp opportunity here to try and put points on the board in the first half. They do control it. Great line out, great catch. They're plowing forward now. Rook is formed, Brookline put it back out. Oh, she's trying to kick it over the top. That's a very high kick. Oh, Belmont got mixed up, but, but Robin Tonamura McDonald has it, recovers the ball, puts a ruck in, and Lucy's actually going to go, and Mira, Mira Gardner is trying to force her way forward. Oof. Oh, play on, good heads-up play by number 12, and Brookline there, who's those oh, charging oh, forward. Oh, I thought she was going to get through from that the ruck. gap. Yeah, she was breaking right through. Belmont under a lot of pressure now. And again, Brookline with numbers outside, but shifting well to the right. So Brookline again trying to pass out. Much cleaner passing here now. Good ball. Lulu Conroy tries to rip the ball out. Ball's down, roll away. Oh, penalty. Not rolling away. <laughs> so the first half continues, the much like half. the second half of the boys' game, which uh, which had several penalties, and game continued on uh, after uh, after official time had run off the clock. I'm sure these players just want a break, so uh, regroup, get it, get some water, get the halftime oranges in. If, that, if they do that anymore, do they do oh, that yeah, when you we were did. in Brookline High? Do they bring out oranges at halftime for all the players? No, I don't think at Brookline High, in my day, we had oranges at halftime. I don't recall. <laughs> I don't recall oranges at halftime. I think we had water. Maybe that a cigarette a and a beer. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm joking, no. of course. <laughs> no, 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 not, not us. I'm joking, of never, course. Never, never, never. Of never. course, we, ha we have to have a bit of a bit of fun here on the, on the show today so <laughs> the reputation of rugby players is well earned oh nice line out play by brookline bringing their number 18 around the back of the line but uh belmont not fooled by that brookline spins the ball out so continued pressure here oh good offload there and it gets out to their number eight who's driving forward. <laughs> Defensive line holding pretty well here for Belmont, but these phases, good recycling by Brookline here. This is Numbers their, again, this they is have their it. best passage. They've straightened the line up. They're out the whole way. That's a great passing sequence. Number 22, great tackle. It's just now inches short. We're in the inside of five yards from the, from the Belmont line. This is great. Play. This is Brookline's best series of play. They'll want to finish strong here. Yeah, this would really give Brookline a boost if they can. Oh, but they give away the penalty. Oh, they didn't. Clear. Heartbreak for Brookline. Oh, they just didn't as they clear. had regained the momentum. Oh, and it looks like someone's someone's also down. So, oh, that was a great passage of play by Brooklyn. They had our uh, Brookline. They had the uh, many many repeated phases. 
They were able to take the ball in, recycle, gained gained a, a tremendous amount of yardage and had a, a great overlap pass all the way out to their winger who was held up four or five yards short, but in the subsequent ruck, Brookline committed a, committed a foul and now Belmont will have the penalty time to clear it, but we will still play on. The game will still go on. This half will still go on after this penalty, so... Referees probably telling the players that official time is up. So I think they could do is take a tap and kick into, into yes. touch, right? Yep. That's yep. maybe what they do just to end the end the game. But we'll see. This Belmont team are always... End the half, folks. Just oh, sorry, the, half. the half. Don't miss Thank the second you. half. Yep. Thank you. End the first half. Thank you. I'm getting way <laughs> ahead of myself uh, here. So, uh, And we do hope that everybody's found us on uh, Belmont Media Center's YouTube broadcast. A little bit of trouble with the live stream earlier today and should be back in, in action here. That's how the Brooklyn player just getting treated here. Looks like her her knee or ankle or something. Yeah, she was so wincing and apparently in quite a bit of discomfort down there. Courtney, the trainer, taking care of... Uh, is that Courtney who was with Belmont last year? Yes, it, it is. is. Yep, okay. yep, yep. Very good. She's moved on to bigger and better things, but is uh, is the trainer for the girls here this afternoon. Very happy to see her. Wonderful trainer and rugby player herself, so she understands, you know, the difference between a, a contusion and a, and a more serious... Uh, Yeah, she's just getting her, that's great. She's getting her well checked out. Good job, um, great for the players back. So that's great. We love to see the players get up from their injuries and stay in the game. They're good. So Belmont's penalty and it does look like Lucy will tap and kick it out. Tap and now she's gonna kick it into touch and that should end the first half. There we go. All right, the end of the first half, a, a thrilling encounter for the Belmont fans. They lead 21 to zero and um, we will be back in a few minutes to kick off the second half. Thank you. All right, great. Welcome back, Peter. Welcome back here for the second half to kick off. And uh, Belmont now, as we said at the start, playing in the darker shirts. They will be playing left to right. They will take the kickoff. Brookline are all set, ready to go. Halftime strategy reset complete. And uh, we're in for a good second half of the game here. Yeah, interesting first half. Definitely uh, the Marauders uh, able to dominate most phases of play, but particularly their defense was really able to get up uh, quickly, get into the back line of uh, Brookline and disrupt. And Brookline had some opportunities where they had some overloads on the outside. If they can move that ball out a little bit quicker uh, and try to get around the corners, they might have, uh, might have a better uh, chance in this second half. We'll see what adjustments were made. So the Belmont team, five seniors in there, fifth starting 15, and uh, we're going to see how that will play out today. This is their last uh, 35 minutes of rugby for their high school, and immediately from the kickoff, Brookline knocked that forward, trying to recover the ball, and it's a scrum to Belmont on the 30-yard line here, so a good position for Belmont. Certainly not the beginning that, uh, that Brookline was hoping for here putting the Marauders in really good attacking position in the first minute of the second half. So about half the Brookline team are seven, it looks like seven out of their starting 15 are seniors as well. So I'm sure they'll want to go out on a, on a high. So Belmont though quickly out, oh. I'm nice. Is Mia Taylor just burst right through, sidestep. She's gonna go all the way, right under. She's gonna bring it under the post. And what a start to the Belmont. I mean, that was uh, a nice cut through move. She was going to do the pass outside, realized she had an inside lane and took it. Absolutely. And the ability to see that space and to, uh, to make it look like she was going to try to swing that ball wide, get the defense maybe adjusting a little bit in one direction and then cut it back through that nice seam that she was able to see. 
uh, and uh, then really put on the afterburners and take it in for the try. And Mia's been doing that all year. Like she's a, she's a phenomenal player for this team. You know, a great person on the team as well. Like really connects well across the teams. She's got. Um, I think she's a, a rising senior. So we'll see her again next year. Um, as we will for a majority of this team. And I think that is going to speak to Coach McCabe's depth, where she has a, what did I say, 10 out of the 15 players eligible to return next year. I mean, that is a tremendous starting point for, for her and, and the Belmont High School. Absolutely. Same, same is uh, true for the boys' team. Lucy with a kick. She's perfect from the, the spot today. So that's another seven points for Belmont. They... They go to uh, 28 points to zero and just the start they looked for. So it looks like we have a couple of changes here on the Belmont team. I can see that uh, Tabby Kambaza is on, number 22. Let's see what, the, what we have, have shifted. She plays prop. So Lulu's still out there. I wonder, has Campbell shifted maybe? Campbell uh, van der Heiden, who who had a great first half. We'll just confirm that. I think I can still see Kelsey there. So um, it looks like Campbell has gone out and Tabitha is in. Ball comes there for Melis, who just knocks it forward from the kickoff again. So as we were saying, you know, such depth to these teams and, uh, and uh, future of Belmont rugby looking really bright. Also on the boys' side, five sophomores, five juniors, uh, five seniors, no, four, four juniors and one, no, five sophomores, five, yeah, five, five, and five. That's great. Yeah. So ten players returning next year again exactly. and, five, and five off to uh, hopefully play in college or continue their, their careers in, in the club systems or in and around the country. Oh, there's a good scrum from Brookline, but just knocked forward on the pass, a little tentative there. So it is a scrum to Belmont. So we'll see now. So we still have Kelsey in hooking. Tabitha is on the open, on the loose head and Lulu Conroy still there. We still have our second rows of Sally and Rowan and the back row of Sadie and Sage. And Milis is there, I think. Yes. Good scrum, oh, good Sage scrum by Belmont. Well. Offsides by Brookline, so playing advantage. Oh, it's a little sloppy there, but but Mia Taylor's picked that ball up. Good tackle in the middle of the field. Okay, so. Don's gonna bring this back. The so offside. what was that? Uh, I didn't see that in The uh, Brookline, Brookline player had come uh, uh, beyond the ball, uh, which was still in the scrum. Brought it. Uh, thinking that that ball had popped out, but it had not yet. So heads up play by Sage, Sonamir McDonald there to control the ball at the back, at back of the scrum, drawing the offside position, and now Belmont get a, a penalty. Lucy Cabral kicks it in. We're just over the 50-yard line. It's a Belmont line out. And the sun is beginning to burst through here. Look at this. I think sun is winning the day, uh, winning the game against the rain <laughs> right now anyway. We'll see. Clean ball off it was a play there, but it's okay. Lulu Conroy picks it up and now is bursting forward. Lulu, Lulu driving forward. She's continuing to go. She makes 10 yards. Ball's put back. Ruck quickly. Shelby out quickly to Lucy. There's something on here. There's a play on here. Liv out to Mia. Mia charges forward. 40-yard line. Quick ball. And there's Sally Amer just driving it forward. She's staying on her feet. Great drive. Great Thanks. run. Lucy Cabral again. And there's Kelsey, the hooker. Kelsey Donaldson takes it in. Lift, Liv Mann with the ball. Oh, just a slight little low pass there. And Liv, unfortunately, just tipped it forward in the pass. So knock on, scrum to Brookline. Well, it looks like Belmont are trying to do a couple of moves now on their... Uh, Opened their game up a little bit, so they've been practicing this all week and the uh, or all season on the on the practice field. So I think they're trying to create a little space by doing some um, preset moves. Yeah, we've seen some wonderful looping moves, skips, and uh, and really uh, 
other kinds of back stuff that I don't understand very well uh, to, uh, <laughs> to open up the play in the open field. So they win it against the head, and Sage picks it from the base of the scrum, charges nice forward, run. turns, good ruck. Look at that rocking over balls, clean ball there, Lucy Cabrell, out to Liv Mann, who gets it out to Robin Tonamura, who's been breaking tackles all day, out to Mia Taylor, who is bursting through again, Great she's offload. through! Oh my goodness, she is through, that kid has wheels, she knows the lane, and she dives in for the score, that is super play. Mia Taylor, she brings a fifth try in and is now 20, 33, 33 to 0 to Belmont. That was a great workplace scrum against the head. That Beautiful. is just starts there, right? Beautiful. Super scrumming by that pack. Yep. And the, and the eight person pick off the back of the scrum uh, draws that defense in, creates that space on the outside, and away we go. Uh, but of course, uh, all credit to um, all credit to Mia, who saw the lane and absolutely accelerated into it for the try. Beautiful rugby. So Belmont are not taking their foot off the gas here. That's two quick scores at the start of the second half. We are just eight minutes into the second half. And um, we'll watch Lucy Cabrell now with this kick. She's been, she's been good all day with her kicks. Oh, and it just drifts to the right. She'll be she'll be annoyed with that one. That was one she had given at great height, but it stays at 33, 33 to zero in favor of Belmont. And the team drift back. We've got about 27, 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes to play about. So we'll plenty of time for Brookline to get a few scores on the on the board and make it a, a closer game. So we'll see how they can respond to this now. Brookline going to have to find a way to not get deflated here and really keep their energy and assertiveness up if they're going to have any chance of getting back into this one. Still a lot of rugby to play. And Roan picks up a, a, a kind of grubber kick off there, so but Ruck is formed quickly. I will say the speed of which they're getting the ball out of the Rucks today is, is dramatically better than they did against Weymouth. I think they've been practicing that. Phenomenal. Like... Shelby has been phenomenally fast today getting that ball out. So here's Mia again. Mia again taking five players with her as she drives forward. Lulu Conroy now with the ball. She's charging in, takes players in. That ability to keep your feet moving uh, as you go into contact and maybe just pull one or two more players in, create a little bit more chaos in the defense. There's Milas driving forward again, taking three players with them. This is it. This is Tabby now driving forward. She bounds through. Good job, Tabby. Forms a perfect rook. Lucy Cabrell. Oh, skip pass back. Oh, and that's unfortunate. Robin will be frustrated with herself on that one, but that was, again, a sustained piece of play by Belmont. Knocked forward, scrum to Brookline. So how will you celebrate in the Rosenmeyer household tonight uh, with Asa and his team? Uh, will, you have a, will, you, will you put Father's Day on hold and make it all about Asa, or will you wrestle back control and, <laughs> and have a Father's Day meal? I don't try uh, to wrestle anything from Asa. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are man. long. <laughs> You're a very smart yes. man, yes. Ace He's is a great man. Six foot four, 280 <laughs> pounds of muscle, and I'm done wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it'll be, uh, I think we'll have to put our Father's Day things on hold, uh, right? It, it's going to be, as usual, uh, rugby focused, but I'll tell you the nice thing is that I couldn't have a better uh, Father's Day, as we said earlier, uh, than watching these kids out here playing a game I love uh, and that I'm uh, privileged to get to coach. And, uh, and support here in Belmont, which is just so much fun. So I'm having the Father's Day of my life. Oh, that's wonderful, yes, and, and me too as well. This is a great, a great uh, spectacle here, a great game for the girls, and, and it's not over yet, so Brookline are now recycling the ball here, coming down on the narrow side. We've got their number seven, who is uh, Kale Bundy. She's formed a good ruck there. Oh. So a scrum to Belmont. There was a knock forward there um, in the pass by Brookline. So scrum to Belmont, 25 yards out, right side of the field. I wonder will they try and go narrow side here? They here. did earlier on uh, in the first half, and I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of space over here and only one defender. If you can get the overload with that eight, 
eight person pick coming off the back of the scrum, it really can uh, can work wonders. And Mira on this side is super fast. It looks yep, like that's what yep. they're gonna do. Look at that. And Sage is bursting forward. Team's getting dragged in. Tackle looked a bit high, but Don didn't see they're it. Sticking on the side here. Lucy Cabral breaking oh, through Lucy, two, three nice. tackles. Rock Forum Shelby pushing everybody to get the ball. And there's Rowan Dargan now. Is she gonna power her way forward again? She gets up to the three yard line. Shelby urging everybody to get over the ball. Oh, and that's uh, a penalty. Off, off their feet, I think, going into the rock. Oh. oh no, not releasing. Not releasing. Okay, so penalty, bit of relief here for Brookline. Good, good play by Belmont, but Brookline have the penalty to clear. That's gonna stay in. Oh yeah, beautiful catch. She's gonna look for open space. And she is now assessing her lane. Oh, good tackle, good offload oh, though. She held it off and Sage is charging forward. Beautiful offload. There's Sally Amer, like they're so quick to form their pods. Sally is charging forward, Lulu on her heels. Great support by Belmont, look at that ruck. Now Kelsey Donaldson out to Tabby, who's gonna take it forward. Tabby forms the ruck, clean ball. Lucy, live man, Sit. Mia. That's Mira Gardner there in the tackle. It's Lucy again, trying to charge forward. There's Rowan now. She's so hard to get down. And again, the referee is going to give a holding. Oh, holding onto the ball. So, so a little slow for Belmont to get the ruck in there. Um, that's twice in a row, and, and, and Brookline have another chance to clear their line. So safe touch finder there, uh, Brookline line out. But Belmont still deep in the Brookline end with... Uh, so Roan is, uh, Roan Dargan after a great game, initial try score, those pink boots, she's, uh, she's taken to the bench and Gretchen Christensen, who is a very familiar member of this team, is, is coming in at second row. Gretchen will make a big impact. She has all season, so we'll uh, look forward to her her impact as uh, Brookline take the line out. They're nice and clean. Lucy Cabral with the tackle there, right in the middle of the field. And again, Brookline have numbers oh, out wide. Knock on, I think, just a But pass. can't make use of it. So we've had a couple of little stop and starts here. Uh, flow of the game is a little disruptive, but we will, uh, Belmont have, um, have the scrum in a good attacking position, 12 yards out. Looks like Shelby's coming off. And Clarissa Field, number 20, has taken her place. So a couple of, this is, and this is what we said earlier, this team is a squad. They're not a team of 15. And um, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see all the team get, get a part. Like Coach McKay plays the team for 45, 50 minutes and brings on fresh legs and doesn't care how good a person's doing. Their job is done and they know that. And yeah. next player comes in, it's super play. Oh, bobbled over there as Lucy was on the, on the uh, great offload to Lucy. And here's Mira Gardner who's, Super fast, but she just gets a great tackle there by, by Brookline. And here's Gretchen now with her first uh, surge forward. Good ball, laid back. Great presentation by Gretchen there. And Sadie Taylor trying to do a dummy pass, brings it in the middle, lays it back. Clarissa with the ball out. Robin Tonamura to her sister Sage, who tries to break through. Run the scissors. And here's Sally Amer now working forward. Lulu there forcing the rock out. That's a great play. Lucy Cabral. It's out to Tabby. Tabby gets pulled down. Great tackle. Middle of the field. We got options both sides. They go left. Lucy Cabral to Lulu Conroy, who's just going to charge Lulu's through. through. Lulu's going to get Lulu's through. Is Lulu going to score? She, she does. Is. Oh, oh, God is proud. There you go. Congratulations. Oh, what a try. Oh. She took that on and saw the gap she and drove. Really did. And, and then nobody the, was going to stop her. That uh, big stretch. Steam. Oh, I love it. So well done. And that's Powerful another try. Running. 
So 38 points to uh, to Belmont. That was great to see from a dad's perspective and also from the <laughs> <laughs> just for the team. That was well worked. They deserved that. They had a lot. There must have been 15 hands on that ball at some phase during that uh, last two minutes of, of play. But great, great work by the team. And Lucy, uh, Lucy Cabral gets a shot here now to uh, add the extra two points. So Peter, I, uh, before the game, we were um, we were trading emails about things, and I think you you had mentioned many countries that were tuning in. Did, can you elaborate a little more? You had mentioned Hong Kong. You had mentioned other places. Well, so. We have fans from all over the world: uh, Hong Kong, Belgium. Uh, I think there's folks in California and the West Coast who have tuned in today, um, and. Uh, and we're just really, really pleased to be able to bring this broadcast to so many Belmont rugby fans and, from, and family uh, all, all around the globe. So welcome, everyone. Hope you're enjoying uh, a really wonderful day of rugby, a boys' championship, and uh, girls who are uh, in a very good position uh, to win this one. I know we also have on the girls' side many, many different families from around the world. I know my own family is tuning in from Dublin and Galway to watch the game. We have people coming in from England and into into Europe as well. And then uh, also on the on part of my family also in California tuning in. So hello to all of you. I hope you're enjoying us uh, commentating the bit of banter we have going on here, Peter, but also uh, some really exciting rugby and... Um, from our perspective, seeing the seeing the result that we were looking for, so still still about 17 minutes to play, maybe 20 minutes um, left, so still plenty of time for Brookline to come back and score a few tries, and uh, they are now starting here on the 20 yard line, 20 yards out from the Belmont try line. Brookline girls far from conceding this match and uh, continue to fight hard, and in good attacking position here with the line out playing in at the 20. Oh, they're number three. Breaks through. That's a great super break through by Anouk Pierce, and she's driving right forward. Very close to the line. This is the best position Brookline have had. They're going to spin it out. If they they can have numbers out, they again. They have numbers, they have numbers again. Great oh, they couldn't tackle. get it. Great tackle by Belmont. And one and more. Numbers again. They've one been more. overlap. No, but they're just stopped short. Number two was was Sarah. Sarah Montner just stopped short, and now they're driving. But great oh. defense. They're holding them up. Belmont are holding them up. It's not there. It's right on the. And it's a penalty for not releasing. Oh no, it's a try. I'm sorry. It's a try. I'm she, sorry. she managed to squeak the ball over. No, I. From this perspective, it looked like she was a little sh short. I oh no! It's not. It's the it's penalty. It's not in. It's a it penalty. Is. That's what we were. Yes, that's oh what I thought gosh. originally. She didn't let go. She held on on the ground. That's. A, that was just super defense by the Belmont Marauders right against the line. They were able to force the penalty. Like what a team! Wow, what a turn! Oh, Lucy Cabral with the clearing kick there. I think that was just a, that was grit and determination to hold up there. Great defense by Belmont and absolutely heartbreaking for Brookline who was knocking on the door for their first points of the afternoon. Just couldn't power it across and they had numbers on the outside if they had spun that ball out. It's a clean take by Sage. Oh, but it looked like it was not a straight line out. That's the signal the referee is giving. So he's going to give a scrum, I believe, to uh, Brookline. Should. Look a little Flares. confused Flares here. Players are a little go. confused. A little confused <laughs> about what's happening. Yeah. All right, they choose the line out. Oh, they're choosing a line out. Okay, their choice. You just did it! Do it again! 
crowd urging Brookline on here. Looks like Meredith, Meredith Christ is taking the throw in. Good lift, oh, good clean catch there by, oh, that was Meredith, I should say, number six. So they give it to their number three, who has a short jaunt. Spins out number 12 there. Great is tackle. Sophia. And numbers again for Brookline, oh no. Oh, that's a great tackle by Mira Gardner there. Good support by Brookline. They have huge overlap over here. This yes. would be the perfect time for the exactly. out-off to chip it over. <laughs> this is huge overlap outside. If they could just Spin get it. it out. Spin it. They have the numbers One if more. they could get it out. One more. They're gonna take it. Oh. <laughs> Can't. No, you have to let the ball do the work, Charlie. You, you can't run every every opening. Belmont are shutting it down again, but we're stuck on the 10-yard line in, inside of Belmont's half, so 10 yards out for Brookline. They're we're desperately trying to plow forward to get back into this game. Their pick, great tackling again by Belmont. Now they spin it wide. Here they come. Oh, But Belmont is here Lynn again. holds it up to disrupt it. Tabby holds on, she's spinning her to the ground. They're trying to force the ruck. Next phase of play, this is great continuous rugby by, oh, but there's a penalty infringement there, not rolling away from the tackle. That's Brookline, are they gonna kick it into touch here? Are they, I would imagine they would tap and go here and try to get these points on the board. And they do, yep. and they do. That's why you're a coach. Oh, but what happened? Oh. She didn't tap through, was it? Or she knocked it up forward in the tap? I didn't see. It I didn't felt see. like she just tapped it into her hand, so I wasn't quite sure either. But the referee yep. saw something. He's been on top of this game for the, the whole game, so. Yeah, Don Jennings doing a very good job of this game uh, this fact, afternoon, very consistent. All the officials have been very good, actually, right on the, the two line assistance as well as the, as the referee. Great job. And in the boys game, the crew did a great job also. Lucy Cabral with a clearing kick. That's just go. That's gonna bounce oh, in. Super kick. Fun. She kicks it like 25 yards there. That's wonderful. Giving a lot of breathing space to this Belmont team. Her, her pack will be really appreciative of that. And, and Brookline with the throw. We're well, Belmont with just absolutely Impressive defense on that uh, stand there, uh, weathering uh, phase after phase of, of Brookline attack, and uh, and Brookline unable to to punch the ball into the try zone. So Samantha Dickerman is the person throwing the ball in for Brookline. They're number eight. They're calling their play in, adding a person into the line out. Belmont have four in the line. Could go long here. Oh, I don't think you can not, do that. Not allowed to do You're that. Not allowed. That's a double movement. Yep. So it's a Belmont free kick. So Lucy taps. Oh, bringing it out to the mark. She's going to yep, tap it. I have to tap it through the mark. And she does, and now it's spun back here into Kelsey Donaldson, who takes it forward to form the first ruck. Clarissa. Belmont has numbers on the outside. But there's Sally trying to plow up in the middle. They're resetting in the middle. Sally's had run after run this afternoon. Clarissa Beautiful. Field out to Robin, and this is Mia, who finds a lane and breaks through and passes it out. And this is, is Ella. Is that Ella Ora, I think? On the yeah, I think so. Brookline with good defense out there, but Sadie Belmont. Taylor burrowing through, they're up to the 30 yard line. Oh, Unstoppable. big move on here, nice. live man. And this is Mil Miris, she's through. Oh, she's a great saving tackle there by the out half for Brookline. Zoe Reynolds, great, great tackle there. A Ray, Ray Bold, very good tackle. But Belmont still with the ball here. They're moving it. Oh, great pick up by Mia. That she's going to get through oh, again. Oh, she's going to go again. Oh, Mia Taylor, hat trick for you. Hat trick for on the afternoon for Mia. Oh, beautiful well vision, beautiful movement. 
They'll be happy in the Taylor household. I know Zach and Barb very well. They'll be really happy with this. What a great performance by their two girls today. Absolutely. Sadie and Mia have done a tremendous job for this team. And, and that really is the cushion now that, 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 you know, Belmont have. So up to 43 points now with the conversion attempt with about nine minutes left. I think this game is, is beyond Brookline's reach at this point. Yeah, I would say. And, uh, and um, the Belmont defense absolutely shutting down any uh, any momentum that Brookline was able to gather this afternoon. So Lucy Cabral with the two-point conversion attempt. And that's a good one, so that brings it up to 45. So, what's that, seven tries, I think. We have seven tries, five conversions, make the 45 points, and uh, it's been pretty dominant from, Bel from Belmont all throughout this game. So as we say, about eight minutes left on the official clock. The, uh, there has been a couple of injuries, so the referee will play a few more minutes than that. So maybe 10, 11 more minutes left in the, in the game of playing time and, and Brookline to kick off on the restart. So that's a deep kick into Belmont's uh, oh, Liv Taylor bobbles, it, or Liv Man bobbles, though. but it goes back. And here's Robin Tonamura McDonald, who is surging down this right side, ruck formed. Larissa out to Tabby. Tabby's going to drive it through, knocks a player over, forms the ruck. Great play. Strong run by Tabby. There's Sadie Taylor now, forcing her way through. And look at oh, that. Oh, she she's, breaks it. She's Oh, great tackle, though, at the, at, the, at the end. The ruck is formed. Look at the speed of the ball out. Great. Players on the outside. They have numbers if they can get it out there. Oh. Here's Lulu Conroy charging forward. She it's a mistake to let through. Lulu get ahead of steam going, <laughs> really. Uh. That's great. And here is Gretchen Christensen knocking players over. Rock form, balls out. Clarissa out to live. Little skip pass. And this is Mellis. Mellis is driving. Oh, gets the offload out of the Beautiful rock. Amazing. Offload. Liv gets the offload on the pass. And Mira cuts inside. Mellis is right there again. Look at this play. Mira understanding that she was out near the, near the uh, touch line. Cut it back in, uh, continuing Belmont's very fluid play here. Great and they have numbers out. on the outside. That's Robin Tonamura McDonald again, sets the ruck up. Super pass. Here's Sadie now, like trying to burst through again. She's not she going to let, she's going to go. She she's she's going. away. She's, she's broken away. through the tackles. Not to be outdone by her sister, Sadie Taylor. Puts one on the board for Belmont. And that is going to put them up at 50 points. Wow, this is, this is a great performance. This team will be incredibly proud of all their accomplishments today. Yeah, they're really they putting everything that they've worked on all season into, uh, into this uh, game today. It's on full display. Uh, great support, wonderful defense, and, of course, uh, an offensive machine. So just so connected. There's one thing about rugby, I think, Charlie, and you'll know this as a former player, it's, it's that you really depend on each other. Uh, and you depend on each other for support, um, physical, of course, but also uh, all of the communication that makes rugby go well. Um, and then the ability as you go through a season to anticipate each other, uh, to understand uh, where each other's strengths and, and vulnerabilities are, and to be able to really pull together um, to form a, a cohesive group is, is just something special. And this girls team has all of that in spades. Yeah, that's a, that's a great call out. And I think, you know, everybody should really realize that this performance is due to four months of five days a week of hard grinding it out in the rain and in the snow and in the sun. Every one of these players on both the boys and the girls team is dedicated to each other, as you said, 100%. And it really showed today for the program I mean, Belmont High should feel really proud of their two teams today. They've had two really strong performances and, and, and it looks like double champions uh, in, in the States for this year. 
And you'll see 23 players in, in Belmont uniforms on this field today, but as we said, 70 girls in the program, and uh, as we like to, as we like to, uh, to repeat in, on the boys' side, iron sharpens iron. Everybody's lifting each other all the time, uh, sharpening each other's skills, um, and, and uh, resulting in the kind of quality rugby that you're seeing on the field today. This is great. So uh, from the kickoff, Belmont have recovered. Milis is driving forward, forming the ruck. Good decision to go to ground. Out to Tabby now, who's going to like fry and grain some hard yards. She does. She gets five yards there out of nothing. And now it's back out to Lucy Cabral, out to Sadie Taylor, out to Lulu Conroy, who is going to barge through. Look at that. They're trying to pull her <laughs> shorts down, and not, it's not going to stop not her. <laughs> not not going to stop hilarious. Lulu that way. Lulu was on full steam that's oh, a little clever chip ahead oh just out oh, over the line bad. this is this is really they're turning it on at the end here for everybody so about three minutes left here with the score 40 uh, 52 to nothing excuse me here at curry college in milton for this miaa girls final uh game championship game and uh just a, a wonderful uh, wonderful show from the belmont side today and Brookline fighting hard till the end, not giving up anything. Brookline must be very proud of themselves to have made this game. I don't think they were expected to have uh, gotten this far. So congratulations to them and their coaching staff. Uh, absolutely, I think it was great. Um, a great program, great to see them here. They'll learn a lot from this game, um, I, I hope, and, and their returning uh, juniors and, and, and sophomores will you know, be better for it next year, and they'll come back strong again. So, um, yeah, and I hope there's a whole bunch of incoming freshmen that say, "Oh boy, I want to play in a state championship." And the girls did that last year. I want to be a part of that that thing. That's right. So Brookline clearing here, um, ball on the 35, 34 yards out of the on the Brookline half. And we are minutes away from the final whistle into the last two minutes on the official clock. And then um, we will have whatever the referee deems is uh, extra time. So big shout out to Kate McCabe, Coach McCabe and, and her staff um, who have just created uh, an absolute uh, juggernaut of a rugby program at, at Belmont High School and uh, not just that but a community that is full of as we said mutual support uh, and a, a place for uh, for girls to really uh, you know learn the game of rugby uh, and learn a whole lot of skills about That's working together nice run they really do Tabby drives it forward there it gets 10 yards on that run back to Lucy Cabral on the short side here Robin out to Mira who's Charging forward hard, looking for the offload. Realized it wasn't there, went to ground. Melis is taking this forward. Look at that, driving those legs as she hits the contact. Belmont not done yet. Abby Hill, who's come on now at number 17, trying to get into the action, staying on her feet, driving forward, balls recycled. And that looks like it's Sage or Robin, I should say. Tonamura McDonald puts it back, lays it back. Lulu Conroy trying to burst through. Again, oh, and she does. Some hard and she yards. does. And they're trying and to pull her from the going. back again. She's it's not going to happen. She's oh, but a good tackle to push her back at the end. <laughs> nice the ball run by recycled. Lulu. And I think that was an offside by Brookline. Yep. So right now, two or three yards after that run by Lulu. And the team is on the verge of another, another score. Let's see what happens here. How about a tap and go to Tabitha? Come on, Tabby. Nope. Oh, it's to Lulu. it to Lulu. She's bursting she's through. through. And she scores. She scores. There Second we try go. of the day. Beautiful. Well, that was, again, another great team move. Constant recycling of the ball. Constant rucking. Quick ball out. Each player knowing exactly where they needed to be. And, and it, they got a penalty. And then it was just a... It's just strength over there, push through the line to, to, score the to score the try. And time has gone here at uh, Curry College in Milton, Mass. Sun is shining, and, uh, and the girls are going to walk away uh, victorious in a big way this afternoon, having earned their fifth consecutive Massachusetts 
state championship in Division I girls rugby. Quite an accomplishment. Super accomplishment, like on, the, on like uh, going back to Coach McCabe and that staff and the program they've built. It's uh, yeah. like they are the architects behind this for the girls program. And there it is. That's that is the, the final whistle. And our Belmont Marauders are the state champions in, two, in 2023. And this team is delighted as they celebrate in the middle of the field. Congratulations to them. They just cap off the double today here at Curry College with the boys winning earlier. And what a great finale for Belmont High School. So, Peter, with that, we're going to say uh, hang up our, our commentary for the season. And it's been a pleasure uh, these last few games with you. And, and I look forward to continuing this in the, in the next season. Charlie, the pleasure is mine. And don't miss next season, folks. We'll be back. Thank you again to, uh, to Jeremy Meserve and the whole uh, staff at Belmont Media Center uh, who was able to bring you these matches today. Yes, thank you. And good night. direct your attention to the center of the field for the awards presentation. Congratulations to both teams on an exciting MIA Rugby State Championship match. At this time, administrators from both schools will present the state finalists and state champion medals to their players.
Congratulations to Brookline High School on an incredible season. At this time, MIAA State Rugby Director Amy Daniels will now present the championship trophy. Will the coaches and captains of Belmont High School please come forward to accept your championship trophy.